Hi there. This is my 2018 seedling plot for my TPS potatoes. Although I do have some diploid tubers planted in one row and I got a bunch of wild potatoes planted in the far row. But I've got three 50 foot rows of TPS seedlings in here. Kind of things that you'll see growing your own potatoes from TPS, you're not going to be prepared for until you do it because when the commercial breeders are selecting which potatoes to release, most of the stuff that you're going to see in this patch would get culled. But um, most of those things don't matter if you're just gardening at home or you're, you know, growing potatoes on a homestead scale. And so, yeah, but you will see them and they will probably surprise you and you should be prepared for them. I had a few people ask me about where can I buy true potato seed because I want to have some in my seed stash because I'm a prepper. And I'm just here to tell you that's not going to work because you need to know how to grow TPS from seed. You need to have know how to grow potatoes from TPS if you're going to like realistically it's not something you can just have in your back pocket or in your seed stash or whatever and never use it until like whatever the world comes to an end. That's just a ridiculous idea. Like you you have to have experience just having the seeds, the seeds don't grow themselves is what I'm trying to say. You know, if you want to grow potatoes from true potato seed, you have to actually do it. You have to have the physical knowledge of how they behave and how to select them and how, how they're different from growing potatoes from tubers. And you really honestly have to have experience growing potatoes from tubers too, you know? It's like potatoes are fairly easy to grow, but there's all kinds of things that you ought to know you know and this idea that you can just have seeds stored in your closet and not be a gardener or a farmer and then you can just pull them out when the world comes to an end is nonsense i mean i can talk for hours about how ridiculous i think the whole prepper doomsday prepper thing is but it's like this is more this video like was inspired by that question but like it's more geared towards people who want to grow TPS and haven't yet and this is just like this is what you're gonna see most likely okay so that's what this video is um, one thing you're gonna see I'm pretty sure is really long vines commercial potatoes are selected for relatively short determinate vines mainly because the market that professional potato breeders breed for are commercial growers. People that are growing large acreages of potatoes and using mechanical cultivation and um, mechanical harvesting, right? And big, long, tangled vines are a pain in the neck when you're growing potatoes with machinery. And so they select against it. They want nice, compact vines, okay? This vine, and this isn't even remotely as long as a vine can get. You know, some of these are pushing four feet tall, okay? And I've had them six feet, I bet you I could find some six foot vines in here. I'm not gonna go tearing through, but like, if you look at this patch, this patch has five rows in it and they were planted at 36 inch spacings on row, um, on center, I'm sorry. And basically we have full canopy cover here. So 18 inches to either side and actually they've grown in between each other, you know. So the vines are completely covering the ground in this patch for the most part. Just 90% of the potatoes in this patch, the seedlings in this patch would get culled for that trade alone, like a commercial potato breeder would just toss them because the vines are too big. They're too long and unruly and floppy and they don't like them, okay? So that's something you're probably gonna see. Another thing you're likely to see is a lot more flowering than you're used to. Because if you're growing from TPS, and especially in the seedling year, TPS plants typically flower a lot and they'll produce a lot of berries in the seedling year if the conditions are right if it's not too hot 
or if it's um, not too dry. If it's hot and dry, potatoes tend to abort their flowers before they, uh, before they even open. But you're going to see a lot more flowers than you're used to. Another thing you're likely to see is potatoes that are unruly underground. Um, so let me point out what you're looking at here. The, the tuber that this potato was, where this potato was planted is about 20 inches from this stalk, okay? See this sprout coming up and this one here? So if I pull back the mulch, let's see what we can see. So here's the stolen that this sprout was coming off of and it comes out of the ground here. The tuber is coming from is either, either over there or over there. So like 20 inches away or so. So this potato is spreading multiple stolons, you know, quite a bit away from where the seed piece was. That's a deal breaker if you're a commercial potato grower because you can get potatoes growing all over the place. It's honestly a little bit of an annoying habit even for me, but as a home gardener, you can live with it. As a homesteader, you can live with it, especially if it's a trait that's coupled with high yields, you know, but you're never gonna see that from Yukon Gold because it's a trait that they, you know, that's like 100%, you know, cull out. But the number one thing that you're gonna see from TPS plants is variability. So even if you're just growing TPS seedlings from one seed lot that's selfed, that is like self-pollinated seed from a variety, odds are you're gonna see a huge variation in a bunch of traits uh, between each individual seedling. You know, some they're gonna be different colors most likely, they're gonna be different shapes, they're gonna be different yields, in particular different yields, okay? And that's gonna vary based on your condition. I'm just gonna dig a few of these potatoes to show you the variability. I'm gonna try and dig two potatoes from one seed lot and uh, hopefully they will come out differently but I also want to recommend um, some videos from a channel that I just came across called um, uh, Torp Tomate I think I was just watching her videos they're awesome she's in Sweden and she does a bunch of reveal videos on TPS plants that she's grown and a lot of them she's grown from her own deliberate crosses which is something that I don't do I don't actually do much deliberate I don't do deliberate crosses and then keep track of the cross so she actually knows the parentage of the of the potato she's crossing and then she's um, growing those seedlings out and then revealing the plants. It's really cool. Those are so good, such good videos. And that's just a great example of the kind of variation you're gonna get from growing TPS. So I highly recommend, you know, you check out her videos and I'll put a card there so that you can, you know, just link to the one of those videos. But I, you know, subscribe to her channel if you're interested in TPS. She's got like a ton of great uh, true potato seed content. So these guys I just harvested this evening. Um, these are actually happened to all three be TPS plants from this year, 2018. And they're all three diploids. This one is uh, Round Burgundy TPS, which I got from Doug Strong. This one is Chaucha Amaria Larga, which I think was originally from Bill Whitson. And this one was also Chauta Amaria Larga. And so this is kind of uh, on the low end of what you can expect from your TPS plants, you know, like four tubers, four tubers, you know, just a small handful of... Okay, so uh, I'm going to 
dig this long vine seedling that is the second seedling in my row of CIP 396286-7 which I got from my man Nathan um, so once again these have vines that are mostly died down and really long vines I don't we'll see how much we get out of this plant and one other thing that Torpen Tomate does is she's growing a lot of her seedlings in bags and containers which is really nice for keeping your individual seedlings separate um, okay looks like nice straight tuber kind of prominent eyebrow pink eyes so This one is belonging to this next door neighbor plant. That one looks also like it's yellow. It's still pretty green. I'm not going to harvest that one yet. So, you can see they're sort of moderate sized, kind of a bright pink eye on them. I would call the yield not super exciting. Let me try and find uh, another plant worth harvesting. Okay, so here I found two plants that have died down pretty much completely. And this plant actually has been attacked by voles. The tubers that are up on the surface have been subject to vole damage. So I try, I've, I'll make another video about my uh, new growing system this year and the problems and uh, successes that I've had with it. But um, I'm really happy with how my potatoes have grown this year, but uh, I because I've been using this mulch, but I am seeing a lot of vole damage, which is to be expected when you're using mulch. So let's dig this one. Guess I'll just I'll keep these vole chewed ones till I weigh them. a rounder potato it looks like it's been really really wet we actually had a pretty dry July and then right at about the last week of July it started raining and it basically didn't stop all August. 
and it's still really wet. Soil is quite, quite wet. So this one is um, a little higher yields, uh, round potato, vole damage. Looks like it has a very slight amount of pink also in the eyes, just the very tiniest amount, not as much as the other one. Different shape. Okay, so we got one more potato here. Another yellow one. This one doesn't have any pink in the eye. Something, something got deep into that. Rotten. Ooh. That's the other variety. That's this guy. I think that's it. So I wanted to show just a little bit of that unruliness I was talking about. What we have here, this is another one of the CIP plants and it started to die down and if you look at this, this stem is from a different plant. And so when you dig through, dig underneath here, this plant has, this plant has these kind of buff tubers with little, little bit of pink on them. And then this stem has these bright magenta tubers, right? But this is 12 inches away on the other side of another plant from where that seedling got planted. And I think I can see a bunch of those stems coming up all over the place. So this plant, which is still growing, likes to pop up out of the ground in various places. So I'm not gonna dig this one yet, just because this, you know, I would partially be digging this one. So, I mean, and I have to say, like, uh, uh, Torp Tomata, or I, I can't remember the channel. Um, I'll correct myself if I pronounced that wrong or said that wrong. Um, you know, the advantage of growing in containers from, with seedling plants, I would say, is that you never get crazy mishmashes like this. Like, these plants are probably planted a little too close together, but 
I needed, you know, I don't have, I don't know. It's There's a trade-off, you know, but. So let me just dig one more plant. Whoa, Nelly. Peanut shaped tubers. That one's rotten. So they're not very many. Kind of a cute pink. Whoa, that's, that's a different tuber. That's a different tuber from a different plant. See, looks like I planted these a little too close together. Um, but, so there's another, these are all kind of variations on a similar theme so far, but these ones have a lot more pink. These have a lot more pink, um, then they kind of odd shapes. Okay, so let's go weigh these up. I'm pretty sure none of these are gonna make the cut. Okay, so I have washed up all four of those potatoes and we got them cut open here so we can get a sense of them and I've also weighed them. So this was the first one we dug and that one came out as one pound one ounce which is like 0.4 almost 0.5 kilograms. Um, this one was one pound nine ounces, which is like 0.71 kilograms. This one was the best weight. This one was the third one we dug, and that one was two pounds one ounce, which is like 0.94 kilograms. And then this is that pink one with the funky shaped tubers, kind of very pale pink with pink eyes. Pink eyes are like three of these, you know, have the pink eyes. But anyway, blah, blah, blah. This is the fourth one. This one was one pound, three ounces, which is like 0.54 kilograms. So, and then flesh color. This is basically white. This is maybe cream colored. Also basically white. You could call this yellow. That's a very pale yellow. Um, so, yeah, these are all just going to be eaten. I don't... This one, you know, my cutoff is about two pounds. You know, if I want to keep a variety, like it has to yield at least two pounds, unless it's like really spectacular in some way. But this one, this is a boring looking potato. It's white fleshed round with kind of like scabby skin. I, you know, this, this potato doesn't excite me, so I'm not gonna keep it, um, but yeah, so there's, I hope this video has been useful um, to try and just describe a little bit of the variability you're going to see and the things you have to be aware of when you're harvesting or when you're growing TPS potatoes, okay? So yeah, thanks a lot for watching.